Hey friends, today I am hanging out at Epcot and we're gonna continue our food adventure around World Showcase, trying all the different sit-down restaurants. And today we are in the France Pavilion to try Chef de France. I'm very excited, I've never eaten here before and I think it's gonna be pretty good. So, let's go do this. And here it is. I've never eaten here before, so this is actually gonna be my first time. But I do know that they have pre-fixed like meals, so you can get one appetizer, one entree, and one dessert for $49.50. But that also comes in one glass of wine. So I'm probably gonna end up doing that because it seems like it's the best bang for the buck. Normally, I like to give you guys a little tour around the pavilion itself that I'm dining at but today I'm running a little bit late for my reservation. So once they do call me, I'll probably have to go in, but I'll show you around a little bit. And then once we get done with dinner, we'll come back out and I'll give you a, a little bit more of a tour. I noticed they brought out the Beauty and the Beast topiaries for the Flower and Garden Festival. That starts actually next week, so I'm excited. But also, the Beauty and the Beast sing-along is actually going on right now. So maybe after dinner, we'll come check that out and get a dessert from the bakery. I love the bakery back there. It's my favorite spot. I just got a notification, so now our reservation is ready. Well, the table is ready, and uh, I'm hungry. This is going to be good. It is so beautiful in here. They have another restaurant that's not open yet, Monsieur Paul's, but it's actually closed and it's upstairs. But I love the inside of this restaurant. Ooh, we're gonna get a nice window seat, it looks like. Oh, fancy that. I really like the table that we got here. This is always a good surprise when you get to have like an outside view. I don't know why, it just makes good for the lighting and just the dining experience. I like looking at pretty things when I'm eating. And you can just see everybody walking about enjoying the France Pavilion. And look, those are the topiaries with Beauty and the Beast before. Like I mentioned out front, they are doing a prefixed meal where you get an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert, and a glass of wine or soda, and it's all $49.50. So we'll take a look at the entrees and appetizers and see what we're gonna get. I'm gonna try to get things I normally wouldn't get. You know what I mean? So like if there's a go-to option that I always get at different restaurants, whether it be steak or chicken, I usually tend to do something different for like these different reviews because it's about experiencing new food that things I've never had before. For you. We'll take a look at the appetizers first and you see that they have some really good choices. They have some salads and some charcuteries, but I think I'm going to go with the French onion soup because I like soup, but I'm not too big on the, the cheese, so we're going to see how that works out. And then for entrees, they have salmon, steak, but I think instead of just going with the steak like I normally would do because, you know, I like steak and potatoes, I might get this Bayoff Boigne, and it's beef braised and cabernet with baby onions, carrots, and linguine pasta. That sounds like a good idea because, like I said, normally I would just go immediately for the filet, but mixing things up a little bit is a part of the experience. And then for desserts, we have to do the creme brulee. We have to. I don't think I've ever had beef bouillon or beef brandy before. I've had plenty of Irish stews and I just, I, I do enjoy stews a lot. Now this one is made with a Chardonnay and it's served with linguine pasta. So it's definitely a big, it's a big change up I would say and I'm excited to try it. They also serve some Cronenberg here. I ordered the Cronenberg thinking I could have got this with the prefix meal but you can't. So I'm going to have a glass of wine come a little bit later. but. I'm still excited to drink this. You can't say no to a Cronenberg, you know? This is so refreshing. Oh, what do we got? Baguette? Yeah. Maurice, the baguettes. <laughs> that is really cool. So along with that prefix meal that's $49, you also get a baguette. And it's hot. Like, oh, I'm excited. Need a little butter, a fresh baguette. This is, this is a really good deal. I think I'll hang on to my baguette for when my French onion soup comes because that'd be good to dip in the French onion soup. So, you know, it's kind of like a French dip maybe. And I've been trying to take my hat off, you know, because I want to be gentleman-like, but the sun is really, really bright. So I'm going to keep it on until the sun just moves to the left there, just a little bit. You know, I, I definitely want to be a gentleman and you should take off your hat in fancy places and I feel fancy in here. But it is really blinding me right there. Soon, it'll go down a little bit. It's still a beautiful view though, so I'm happy. 
The soup is here and I had to switch seats because the sun was getting too much. So now I actually on the other side of the table and look at all this goodness in here. I am so excited to try this. If you like the cheese, there's a lot of it. I'm gonna try a little bit with the cheese. I just don't know if I like the, the gyuri that it is. Usually, uh, I don't like provolone cheeses. I'm very picky, but we'll see. Either way, I know I'm gonna love the soup itself. A little bit of soup. Ooh, that's hot. Ooh, that is some hot soup, but now I wanna try it with the baguette. So we're gonna break the baguette. Look at that. Now we're gonna dip the bread in. That's the way, that's how you do it. This is gonna be amazing, I already know. The soup is great, but when you mix it with the fresh baguette, oh man, this is just dunkability right here. Let's make sure we get a little onion and cheese this time to try it. I have to say that baguette is amazing and I probably will save a little bit for my stew as well. I know I like to eat stew with bread and I've never actually mixed in linguine pasta with stew so that's going to be a new combination for me. I'm used to eating like, you know, just, you know, firehouse stew and stuff like that. So it's never served linguine. Oh, and as we are enjoying the soup, the beef bouillon actually came and this looks amazing actually it kind of reminds me of a pot roast but pasta i'm 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 excited i am ready to eat this bad boy right here i'm not sure how i do this because i want to try to get everything in one bite so we're going to grab a little bit of the beef a little bit of the carrots and then a little bit of the sauce well the noodles and kind of just get it all on one bite I think this is the perfect bite size, and we got some of the sauce on there. I'm very excited. The meat is just like a pot roast to me, but what really stands out is the flavor, like of the, the sauce itself, and you can taste the Chardonnay or the Burgundy in there. This is, this is a very delicious dish, actually. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I am right now. Like, <laughs> this is a sleeper right here, folks. This is a sleeper. And of course, like I said, I kept a little of the, ben, the beignet so that we can kind of like dip the, the bread into the sauce. So I'm going to actually scoop up a little bit of the meat, put it on the bread, kind of make like a little stew sandwich. You know what I mean? Add some carrots. Oh yeah. Get some of that nice au jus or the juice at the bottom. Put it on the bread. And look at that. A little stew sandwich. I would definitely get this again. So if I come back here, I probably will try the filet, but I mean, this is right now as it stands, my go-to dish now, because I liked it that much. And don't forget about the Cabernet. I'm not a big wine drinker, but it's okay, it's good. <laughs> It's funny because I probably know more about tequila than I do wine, but you can still use all of the things that I learned at my tequila tasting at San Angel or at the La Cava, and uh, I can use it kind of towards tasting wine. You know, I'm going to get it to breathe a little bit and watch the tears actually come down a little bit. You see that? Fancy. And here is the creme brulee. Look at this. I'm excited. I do love creme brulee. I don't know if I should break a little bit off. Yeah. Oh, oh look at that. Perfect. And a little creme brulee to you. This is much too good, much too good. It kinda is like a perfect texture and it's got a great toasted taste. I love this, amazing. I mean, I like creme brulee, but this is just really yeah, good. I, I really enjoy this creme brulee here. I don't know why, but this just reminds me of a perfectly toasted marshmallow. It is so delicious though. I'm trying to get every little last bite out of there. Kind of scrape it all. 
But with that, it's the end of the meal, so I think we're gonna go hang out around the actual France Pavilion a little bit. Overall, this was an amazing experience, especially for the price. I mean, that prefix 49.50 is a really good deal with the wine, the appetizer, the entree, dessert, and the bread service. You get a baguette, so you can't go wrong with that. That was a very delicious meal, but like I said before, I want to explore around the France Pavilion a little bit. They have a lot going on over here, and soon they're going to have their own ride, and that's going to make it 10 times better. In fact, speaking of it having its own ride, I was going to use the restroom in there, but instead, I'm going to use the restroom that's back at Ratatouille, well, at the area of Ratatouille. They have the restrooms open, and I'm pretty sure the man himself, Remy, is actually out, kind of like hanging out. Oh yeah, there he is. There's Remy, ready topiary, ready for his Ratatouille debut, opening 2021. This is going to be such an amazing attraction, and I definitely think it needed it over here in the World Showcase. The whole reason that this whole entire back street opened up is so that they actually had a restroom because they closed the restrooms at Morocco, and this is going to be the main restrooms for the pavilion. So it's excited to just see this. It's been here for a while, but I wanted to come and just kind of walk down it and like, enjoy it a little bit. I like the music too. This will also be the first time you get this close to see the flower display over here because any of the years before for Flower and Garden Festival, the only place that you can see it is walking over there by uh, the International Gateway. So it's nice to see it right here. I wish that they would have like a walkway that you could walk down there. Can you imagine just exploring down there? They have the boat parked here. Look at that would have been so nice to actually be able to take a stroll like that. The other really cool detail that I like over this area is the benches because they have little Remy chefs on them. Like it's like such a perfect little touch. Just a little touch for the little rat. Isn't that so nice? I love it. And this guy over here is getting some food. Yeah, I see. Oh, what has he got there? Oh, lordy. Now I want to walk around and enjoy some of the shops and even check out maybe the show. Like I said, I think Beauty and the Beast is running right now, but it does actually switch to the actual France show. I'm not sure at what time though. Looks like the Beauty and the Beast sing-along is still happening and the Depressions of France doesn't start until 6.30. So during the day they have the sing-along and then after 6.30 is when they switch over to the actual France. Like, preview or movie and I don't know might as well wait three minutes and check out the sing-along I know actually it looks like we're heading in right now one minute to go to the Beauty and the Beast sing-along I love all of the different costumes they have in here this is really awesome French storytelling on stage and screen this is Cinderella right here this is a really cool Exhibit <gasps> the Phantom of the Opera Wow, I didn't even know this was in here and then over here. They have Beauty and the Beast. Oh look at Mrs. Potts over there. I Really really like this We must get going though. We don't want to be late for the show. Oh Boy, it's starting. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Beauty and the Beast sing-along. Now, see that girl? Every day, like the one before Little town, full of little people Walking up to say Bonjour, bonjour, bonjour Now it's your dinner here we go. Be ah guest. Be our guest. Put our service to the test. Try Beauty and the Beast. That was actually really fun. I think I was the only one singing though. And I didn't put much in because it didn't come out good on camera. Like you really can't record the screen. It kind of has those lines in it. And also uh don't judge me on my singing. <laughs> and we exit into the gift shop and the bakery, which is also good because I wanted to get maybe a coffee, depending on the line. Since the show just got let out, it's probably very busy over here, but they have some amazing like items in there. 
They've got the espresso, they've got the cappuccino, and then tons and tons of different bakery items. But it is a pretty long line. So I think we're gonna skip it for today. I've come here quite often. I do know another spot I wanna check out though. I came back out to the front of the pavilion because I wanted to show you another spot where I can get some coffee. And that's right here at the creep stand. They actually serve cafe espresso and then also cappuccino. So you can actually get it without waiting in the big line if that's all you're looking for is some coffee. And that's probably what I'm gonna do. You can also get a crepe. I know I'm a little full, but a crepe sounds pretty phenomenal right now. So I might get a coffee and a crepe. Coffee and a crepe, I like the sound of that. As you can see, they have tons of different types of crepes. Crepes with ice cream. Ooh, a homemade hazelnut spread. That sounds pretty good. And then there's the coffee. You can even get the Cronenberg beer here as well. But I just went with the hazelnut crepe and a little espresso. Coffee and a crepe. I was very intrigued on the sign when it said uh, handmade hazelnut like cream. So basically they have house-made Nutella. So first I'm gonna try the crepe. That's good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff right there. Very delicious, I really like this. And the Nutella kind of just tastes like Nutella. I mean, it's just a hazelnut spread, but they make it themselves and it's not Nutella. They just do a good job. And I haven't tried my espresso yet, but that's just espresso. I like how they have it in this little composable cup. Equal choice. And with my espresso, I think I'm gonna call it a day here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it, it was so much fun. I'm not sure what I have left to do. I know probably Morocco is gonna be next. China doesn't have any uh, sit-down restaurants, but I might do the quick service, like the Nine Dragons. That's not open at the moment, so I might do their quick service. And then, oh, the Rosen Crown is temporarily closed for a uh, refurbishment on the dining room. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know what we're gonna do next, but we'll figure it out. I also think a character cavalcade's on its way. So, <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye! Well, would you look at that. Hi, Belle! I just sang to you. Oh, thank you! <laughs>